we are going to try Andrew Huberman's sleep routine to optimize sleep. Andrew Huberman is a neuroscientist and a professor at Stanford University. And I did try his morning routine. Now we're going to try his night routine. Morning routines and night routines really go hand in hand and you need one to be successful with the other. So tonight I'm just going to do what I always do and see how I sleep. Then tomorrow we'll see how well I sleep incorporating his routines. And now it's time for Korean dramas. We are awake and Andrew Huberman says you want to find a consistent sleeping and waking schedule. So I feel like for a lot of working professionals or students, 10.30 to 6.30 should be a little more reasonable than my usual like 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. But you really want to be consistent. But you guys, I just found out some very concerning news about Andrew Huberman. You can read all about it. But I was like, should I even do this video? Because this man is, he's something else. But this video is purely experimental and seeing with all the scientific facts that he shares, does it actually work? We'll see. But the second thing he says is that we need to go out and see light as quickly as possible. If it is a cloudy day or it's raining, then turn on lights, but natural lighting is definitely the best. So we are going to go outside. Because of daylight savings, the sun is out right now or it's starting to rise. It's 43 degrees, which is equivalent to a refrigerator. There's a little spot where the sun is literally sitting right there. So we're going to go and stand there like a little sunflower. So he said if it's an overcast day, then you need to be walking outside a little bit longer. But if it is a sunny day, then like 10 minutes is good. But make sure you wear sunscreen. Okay, let's go head out to my workout. I am already so cold. I am not looking forward to my cold shower after my workout. Ah! Okay, some water with some salt, and then he also drinks AG1. I can't do it in one go. <laughs> Okay, everybody, it is time for the cold shower. I know I'm gonna feel good after. It's just really ramping myself up for the moment. People did say I could start off with warmer water and then finish cold. I am just a very extreme person and I'm like, we're going cold turkey all the way in. No matter how many times I do this, it doesn't really get easier. <laughs> okay, let's start with a little, little warm-ish. Sweet nothings that if this is fine, we're fine. We are not dying, it's all good. Oh. Yeah, I feel good. Okay, well, I am feeling really good after that shower. I knew I would. It's just getting over that initial fear of jumping in. I mean, how many times do we do that in our everyday lives, right? So I'm going to be productive for the next 90 minutes before we jump into eating. So I've actually been taking a social media course because we can never stop learning and anytime I feel like I'm kind of in a creative funk, I feel like growing and learning things helps me have a new refreshed mindset. I have been using the Notability app for a lot of my notes. So 
So Andrew Huberman says for lunch, you want to make sure it is less carby and it really helps you focus. But starches are really good for you when you're trying to get a lot of work done. So we're going to make a dish out of tofu today. And I am not a caffeine drinker, but he does say if you are going to drink caffeine, drink it 10 hours before. So if you're going to sleep at 10 p.m. tonight, then you need to drink it by noon. A mom at my church also taught me how to make these smashed sweet potatoes and they are so good. So I'm gonna tell you guys how to make it. So basically you wash your sweet potatoes and then you rinse it under some water to clean it out and then you're going to steam it for 45 to 50 minutes or until it is fork tender. Now that's going to depend on your heat and the size of your potatoes, but for me, it was about 15 minutes. After you steam it, you are then going to pat dry it and then we're going to cut it into kind of like little Yukon potato sizes. After you do that, we're going to smash them. After we smash them onto a oiled pan or you can use parchment paper. I used aluminum foil, do not recommend that. It did not work, but parchment paper should be good because it's nonstick. Then you're going to drizzle over avocado oil or or a neutral oil. She said olive oil made it taste funny. So I used avocado oil. And then you're gonna stick that in for about 25 minutes. Then take it out, flip it over, and then oil it and stick it back into the oven for another like 15 minutes or so. And voila, it's delicious. Yum. Just a little bit of rice and a lot of veggies. Andrew Huberman says it's really important for us to also go on an evening walk slash late afternoon right before the sun is setting. So it is currently almost five o'clock. It's about like an hour and a half before the sun sets and I'm gonna see if this actually makes a difference. It is overcast today, which means I'm going to have to spend a little more time outside. We're just walking a lot today. Naturally though, the more we walk and the more steps we get, we will be a little more tired than if we were just sitting all day because we're not using any of our energy. But we're gonna do what the scientist says. <laughs> I am starting to get a little sleepy. Last night, I actually didn't sleep very well, not because I did my routine. I think I was just feeling really stressed for my work week, so I could feel myself clenching my jaw. So when I woke up, I was a little bit sore. But Andrew Huberman is really big on, if you are going to take a nap, make it 90 minutes or less, but if you don't need to nap, try to push through and try to take a nap earlier in the day and not closer to your bedtime. And I say that because, you know, there are days where my husband, he takes a nap right after dinner, but he's still able to sleep at night. He's different. <laughs> We also had the joy of seeing her come to faith in Christ after searching scripture and praying. So another important thing is to make sure that we are seeing lower dimmed lights, especially at nighttime. So you don't want to use your main lights like this. It's so bright. I actually do this myself every single night after dinner. We basically turn off all the lights and then I just have our little lamps dimly lit. We have these Govee smart lamps that are connected to our Google Home. And basically I just tell Google to change it to whatever color. Usually at night we use incandescent and it is currently at 1%. But in the living room we'll have it at either daylight during the day or incandescent during the nighttime. So you can see that's the only light source I have in our room and that's really important to allow your body to realize okay we're starting to wind down and it's time to prepare to sleep <sighs> okay we're going to now get ready for bedtime Andrew Huberman also says when you are getting sleepy you should really listen to your body and start getting ready for bed and wind down instead of just trying to push through also, this is actually when he says you can take a warm, hot shower if you need to shower today. But I already showered this morning. 
I already brushed my teeth and at night I use my Great Barrier Relief Serum and then I got this new cream my friend brought it back for me from Korea at Olive Young but I mean you can get it at any online store that sells Korean skincare it's supposed to help with redness which I have a lot of my cheeks always get really rosy for no reason make sure to bring everything down to your neck now this is the last of me being in bright lighting you also don't want to be too warm when you sleep because as our temperature rises we tend to wake up which is why we do cold showers in the morning because your body then ramps up and starts to warm itself and it helps you wake up but we want our bodies to kind of cool down and so he suggests just layering on blankets if you're cold and naturally as you get hot you'll stick a leg out stick an arm out to cool your body down so he does not suggest sleeping with socks but basically creating a comfortable sleep environment is really important when I have really cool to touch bedding, it really helps. So I have a uh, bamboo sheets. They are so soft and it feels cool to the touch and it's literally my favorite. I have everything from Cozy Earth. I have multiple pillowcases and bed sheets from them, but they feel excellent. So he does say you want to minimize your blue light about an hour before bedtime. So until then, I'm going to watch Korean dramas. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about supplements. So he does recommend taking magnesium. My friend actually recommended these to me, the pure magnesium glycinate, glycinate. But I'm gonna read off what Andrew Huberman says because I can't pronounce them very well. Magnesium threonate or magnesium biglycinate and then epigenin, theanine, theanine. But he did say, you know, if you don't need supplements, you don't need to take them. But those are the three that he takes that really helps him sleep. And he suggests that if you have not ever taken these, you wanna try them one at a time first before you stack them. And also consult your doctor, of course. I sleep pretty darn well. I don't take melatonin or anything like that. And we're gonna try this out. I tried it the other night actually, and I had pretty intense dreams. I don't know if that was just that night. So let's try again. He also mentions not to take melatonin, which I've tried taking melatonin before just out of curiosity, but because melatonin is actually a hormone that our bodies produce when it is ready to go to sleep. So you don't want to be taking that. So you want something a little bit more natural. So he suggests like magnesium. So you might be wondering, what am I gonna do for an hour? I still have another hour. I just took the magnesium. We'll see when it kicks in, but I'm actually gonna read. It's actually been a while since I've read at nighttime, because usually I always read during my morning routines. Sometimes I'll read at night. My husband and I read together during our dinner, but it's different when you're just reading by yourself. Andrew Huberman also says that depending on your age, your sleep routine is going to vary. Perhaps if you're 15 years old, you are a night owl. And then when you get older, you may become a morning person or vice versa. But it's really finding a routine that works for you. As long as you can be consistent, it's really going to create a schedule for your body and you're going to feel a lot better. You're going to sleep a lot better and not feel miserable when you wake up early in the morning. He also mentions not to work out in the evenings if you can help it because it really does bring up our adrenaline and it can be harder to sleep. So just be mindful of that. Stress is also a big one and I have noticed I have been quite stressed before I sleep but I have found that reading tonight has helped me kind of de-stress, so I should definitely do that more often. He does say if you're going to sleep with a face mask, you want to make sure it's not too tight. There are two different types of face masks in our home. This one, it helps with if you have eyelash extensions, and then my husband has one that's really soft and comfortable, but it's kind of pricey, but it is a fantastic sleep mask but you don't necessarily need it. I feel like I don't even need a sleep mask when I sleep. Okay, I promise I'm sleeping soon, but Andrew Huberman also recommends being a nose 
breather when you sleep, especially if you have sleep apnea. He recommends taping your mouth. You want to be careful though. You want to make sure that you kind of test it out. Maybe just do like half your mouth because you don't want to suffocate. But for me, I did test this before and I was fine throughout the night with my mouth taped. So mouth tape, like the actual mouth tapes, they're really expensive, but I got this skin tape from Amazon. It was like $7. Definitely much more affordable. And it does not irritate your mouth. Because if you use regular tape, it can kind of like peel the skin off of your mouth. So I just do that and then create a little X. Like this. Oh, that's, that's all I'm going to say. Good night. <laughs> okay, Google, turn off little lamp. Okay, good morning. My mouth feels pretty dry from the mouth tape. I would think it would feel dry if I didn't have it, but let's check how I slept last night. I slept a lot last night because I was so tired. Sleep data. Oh, I got two hours and 21 minutes of REM sleep and an hour, seven minutes of deep sleep. That's really good. The other night, I think I only had like an hour of REM sleep, so. I slept very deeply and really well. This really works. It's crazy. <laughs> I think what's interesting is I really was like, I'm fine, I sleep well. But seeing the numbers and seeing, wow, I was able to get really good sleep last night, just goes to show you should try these things and see if it works for you. Cause we never know unless we try. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe and comment below what you thought. Cause that really helps me too. Bye.